Now I remember seeing Tom Jones on the television and I thought that's, I want to be a female version of Tom Jones, a real entertainer, not a boring old singer. Which is a masculine Frank Carson with credit on this. Absolutely diabolical. Twenty-one more verses, come on! One, two, three, five! I went to America early part of this year, and when I came back, I was offered this summer season. I was actually offered a few, but I took Blackpool because I have a bit of a soft spot for Blackpool. Because number one, I lived here years ago. I got my career started here. So in other words, I did my apprenticeship here, and I used to walk down past the piers and pray to God that one day that my name would be up there in lights. Here I am back uh, and um, topping the bill of my own show and I'm the only female singer entertainer that's doing that in, in, this, in this country. I'm very proud of that. I grew up in uh, a place called Clog. Now, it's awful hard to find that on the map. <laughs> it's a way out in the country, but basically, my hometown is Newry, and uh, Clog is, a, is about, um, I think, about four, four miles outside Newry. I'm the oldest of six of a family, five girls and one boy, and uh, I've got relatively young parents, mummy and daddy, Anne and Owen. I don't see that I had really any breaks uh, growing up at all. Uh, in show business, but I certainly had the taste for it from just a, a wee girl, really, you know, from mil milking the cows when I'd be singing to the cows and they'd wag their tails and they wouldn't kick you, the cows wouldn't kick you if, if you if you sang to them and everything. I joined the Wolf Tone Band and, and uh, I, I wanted to be a majorette like um, Helen McParland who was fronting it. And um, my father says, well, if you join a band, you've got to play an instrument, so and he bought me an accordion, which I, I wanted to be a majorette, I didn't want the accordion really. I thanked them s several times since because um, I self-taught myself since I got the accordion and I still play it to this day. Likely Rusty. <laughs> I used to always get a sick feeling in my stomach going to school. I, I really hated it so much and I get the same feeling now when I see school children with their school bags because that brings it all back to me because I hated it so much. I basically went to so many schools because I was definitely at the back of the queue and God was giving out brains. Academically, wasn't me at all. I had a lot of hard times with, with the teachers. I got, um, one particular time I got battered over the head by, <laughs> or with a huge big thick stick by a nun. And then I got, um, I got hit by a certain school teacher. I won't name any names, but um, because I, I wasn't bright at school, I, I, you know, that's the long and the short of it. I remember the teacher asking me how many days it was in February and I didn't know. And I'm, <laughs> I was born in February. <laughs> but I think when I got to become a teenager and I looked in the mirror and, and um, I had like terrible acne, I just hated how I looked. I had um, very, very curly and frizzy hair, which I <laughs> used to iron. <laughs> So I used to bring one of my pals with me, and I, I remember, I'll never forget the longest day, I'd be back <laughs> towards the ironing board and my hair um, on the ironing board <laughs> with um, brown paper. I think it was newspaper some of the times. And um, there my friend would be ironing away, and then walked um, the, the teacher, and I, I got battered. <laughs> I mean, I really did. And uh, so I think about that. I never liked how I looked. I, I, I always thought I um, looked, I, 
I wanted to be dead skinny, and I, I imagined all my friends were skinnier than me, but more than anything in the world, I, I wanted to have clear skin. So I really, I was waiting, I was uh, looking at the days till I could leave school. And then I did the rounds of um, talent competitions, north and south of the border, sang with my sisters, the Cain sisters, uh, on a lot of, uh, you know, talent shows and stuff. But I couldn't get them to rehearse, they had no interest in show business at all. It was just me, I was like starstruck. We would got a television eventually, because we didn't have a television in our house for a long time. It was a real country life, the way I was brought up, you know. And you didn't miss it, you listened to the, the radio, you listened to plays on the radio, we used to love it. And I remember seeing Tom Jones on the television, and I thought he was the most exciting performer I'd ever seen. And, uh, and I thought, that's, I want to be a female version of Tom Jones, a real entertainer, not a boring old singer. I think the worst thing that could possibly happen to me, two things, one, that I would lose my voice, or two, that I would slip and fall in one of the dance routines and break my arm or break a leg or something. That's a fear I have. I have a fear of falling. And a fear of being booed. <laughs> well, um, I left home and um, there were very dark times, really, because I lived in little cramped, tiny rooms, you know. Mummy and Addie didn't know this at the time. I'd, I'd ride home, so saying everything was hunky-dory poos. Everything was grand. But, um, I started doing the clubs and, and everything, and then I did search for a star. 